climate justice means ending racism. It's time to have a look at some of the indoctrination going on in schools around Scotland. What I'm going to show in this video is government funded resources and also some clips from a video made by a primary school in Glasgow. <laughs> Climate justice means ending racism. That's just nonsense. Their attitude is we'll just bundle together every priority in our political philosophy and teach it to the kids too young to critically assess it so that they assimilate it without being able to really understand its implications. Now, what they're getting at here in terms of climate change, it's always, it almost seems to be that they're saying global inequalities are racial. You know, some countries in the north Northern Hemisphere are wealthy, Southern Hemisphere are often less wealthy. They're different races as well. This is probably a sort of racism issue. I mean, that's just wrong. I mean, there are many reasons why uh, some countries have not developed economically. Uh, corruption is one, political instability. Uh, dabbling in communism in the post-colonial era. These are all very significant factors. But this seems to be hinting towards the idea that racism is behind it. Climate justice means everyone has a safe home to live in. Teaching children about poor housing conditions around the world? Absolutely fine. When I was teaching, we used to do an annual sponsored walk. For a few years, we raised money for a charity that built houses in poor countries. These houses for a family were a £1,000 each. So we'd build a few houses every year. Great. Doing something good, charitable, non-political. But oh no, not anymore. It's all to do with climate justice instead. Climate justice is making sure that everyone everywhere has healthy food to eat. And this is basically communicating that climate justice is just another word for goodness, isn't it? So they're not trying to teach a moral system, they're trying to teach a political system in its place. Climate justice is making sure everyone has clean water to drink. Now, if you went to someone who doesn't have access to clean water and said, what do you want, clean water or climate justice? I think they'd be pretty clear that they want clean water. Now, teaching children at school about clean water access and issues around the world and talking about how charities are trying to help with that, absolutely fine, but keep the politics out of it. Climate justice is letting children play, not worry. Play, not worry. That's a bit ironic. Isn't it? I mean, the climate catastrophism that's preached in Scottish schools does induce anxiety among pupils. That's not just me saying that. That's what the educational establishment itself recognises. You'll see articles, courses, special resources and programmes designed to help children with climate anxiety. In other words, the, the schools frighten the life out of them and then the pupils get upset and then they come in with their pastoral care and counselling therapeutic approach to try and help them to get over that. Now, and they're talking about you know, a right to play. Again, right to play, that's from the United Nations Convention of the Rights of the Child. Another emphasis in, in their worldview. And they mix it all together in, as part of the one true faith. Climate justice is fewer cars so children can breathe clean air. So the war on cars is to enable children to breathe clean air so vote green. Now, there's no data, no justification of this, no critical assessment of that claim. Just the message presented, cars are bad. And if you're a child, obviously you'll be against cars, won't you? Climate justice is understanding that those who did the least to cause climate change are suffering the most. Now, things are not quite that simple, unfortunately. Look at countries like India and China, who are developing uh, economically quite quickly, and they're also massive, massive polluters. But the message coming through this, again, is through the sort of extreme left ideology, is that everything's our fault. Right? The wealthy nations, it's all their fault. In any case, what does justice amount to in these situations? That's a pretty uh, complex philosophical question. Far too complex to present to children in primary school. But obviously, that's the reason why they want to present it. Present it before children have got the critical faculties to analyse it for themselves. So when Humza Yousaf gave, I think it was £50 million to a climate justice fund recently, well, the children obviously will be saying, well done, Humza. Where, where the educators, there's three of us, we're all primary teachers and uh, we exist purely to support schools with global citizenship. We're funded by the Scottish Government to do that. 
Global citizenship, education is a vehicle for indoctrination into internationalist, anti-nationalist, pro-immigration, sort of climate, catastrophism, equity, left-wing ideology. And that's what it's all about. It was introduced by the OECD. And the man who led the project said, if we'd have had global citizenship education in place years earlier, the Brexit vote would never have happened. In other words, he was stating absolutely plainly and openly and honestly that the purpose of global citizenship education is to change the political views of young people. And that is exactly what it's aimed to do. That's why the Scottish government is so keen on it, because the views it tries to uh, inculcate in young people are, the, say, are the ones of the Scottish Green Party, which is not too far away from the SNP. So they are happy with it. Uh, so Scotland is now rated in a league table for the, how well it indoctrinates its children. And you know it's, it's done pretty well so far, quite a respectable position in the league table. Uh, the maths and English assessments, they haven't been too keen on those. They don't really reflect Scottish education properly. So they've you know, we've put those uh, on the back burner. So this is from a global citizenship uh, lesson. So pupils are presented with a picture of a flood and they're asked to consider, you know, I see, I think, I wonder. So what do they see? Obviously a flood. What do they think? Oh, that doesn't look good. Then what are they supposed to wonder? Obviously it's leading them by the hand to wonder if this is climate change that caused it. Now the relationship between climate change and floods, I think is quite complex, but children so young being led to come to that conclusion in the absence of any adequate reasoning is indoctrination. Now I would say about that, I would say, you know, just do a maths lesson instead. Do some real education instead. If you want to learn about floods even, learn about the water cycle, learn about weather patterns, learn about drainage. That's all non-political. That's what young people should be learning about. When they've learned about all those things, they'll then be in the position to be able to assess political ideas when they're a lot, lot older. So I just want to, at this point, make you aware of the Circular Economy Bill, which is going through the Scottish Parliament right now. You can find out more about this on the Zero Waste Scotland website. It's really interesting, short read. And your kids can get involved in the consultation. Now, I would have this up on the whiteboard, and it's a really positive way to say, we've got a Circular Economy Minister in Scotland. You know, this is dead exciting. And we need to get our kids feeling excited about the potential that we've got for change here in Scotland. How about that then? So that is just purely and straightforwardly promoting government policy to children. Look what the government's doing. Isn't it exciting? We've seen exactly the same thing before. I think it was in the Children's Parliament where they painted a mural of children holding up the government's climate change bill and honouring it. I get pure indoctrination. Now, teachers involved in this, how can they not see it? It's quite remarkable, isn't it? it, it it's such a there's such strong groupthink within the educational blob in Scotland that alternative views just don't get any look in at all and critical thinking is virtually entirely absent and things just carry on the way they're going with virtually no opposition at all uh, with notable exceptions like the Scottish Union for Education and the Scottish Family Party. I mean, basically what the Scottish um, uh, education system does under the SNP is it trains children to become green voters. And I think the SNP are maybe starting to realise that they're overdoing it because they want to be turning children into SNP voters, but they're overshooting slightly and turning them into green voters. And you can see that in polling results uh, quite routinely. What do we want? Climate justice! When do we want that? Now! All right, how about that? A bit of chanting. That's just to confirm that this is about activism, not education. Now, I would say, instead of chanting for what you demand, how about uh, going and helping the charity down the road? Let's say the homeless charity down the road, have a little school project, raise some money, go and help them, see what you can do there. Or learn about water supply in, in poor countries, then you know, raise some money and try and help over there. But of course, what we've got here, I would say the sort of socialist approach to dealing with problems, the idea that you make a sacrifice yourself, do something yourself, get organised with some other people and get on with it, they're not so keen on that. They want the government to do something. Whatever the problem is, we need the government to solve it. So their idea of making the world a better place is you write a letter to the government. You campaign to get the government to do something. Um, and that uh, mindset is being taught to young people in Scottish schools. Right, uh, moving on to some sort of anti-racist 
resources here. So we've got a picture of all these people and there are some labels that can be applied to them. So the class activity is that the uh, children put a label with the, the person that they think it suits. And the idea is, I guess, that children are obviously going to get them wrong because they don't know who the people are. Uh, but guess which of those people is actually the real terrorist? Have you guessed yet? No prizes. Obviously, it's the middle-aged white man. He's the one who is really uh, the terrorist. So the assumption behind the lesson is the idea that you know everyone assumes middle-aged white men are, are the good people. They're glorified in our society. So we need to take them down a peg or two and show that even middle-aged white men can be bad. Now, is that really a problem that needs solving in our society? Uh, I don't know. But it amounts to that their strategy in order to solve this sort of non-existent problem is to go out of their way to show majority groups, men, whatever, uh, in a bad light in order to balance up stereotypes. That's the sort of uh, thinking behind it. So if, if you should set a picture, you know, a picture of a woman and said, do you think that that person would be a builder? Most people would say, well, probably not. And they'd say, oh, you know, you evil stereotyper, how dare you? Of course she could be a builder whereas people say i'm not saying she couldn't be a builder i'm just saying i wouldn't expect that she would be so this sort of invert proper reasoning where you know if i said you know i'm a rapper and you said really then uh, i mean these people these educationists would say oh you you bad person fancy judging someone by superficial means like that you are stereotyping you shouldn't have been surprised that richard lucas is a rapper that's really bad of you. You need to go to re-education. And I would say, well, no, it's perfectly normal. I'm not the sort of person you'd expect to be a rapper, and you're dead right. Um, so, so they're trying to just attack basic reasoning and invert it all the time, which, needless to say, is not a good goal of education. Right, another lesson here. So this is about Scottish identity. So the children are invited to uh, place these uh, statements in order of priority, which is most important to you, which is least important, and all in between. So let's see what they are. I am Scottish because I was born here. I'm Scottish because I live here, because I have a Scottish accent, because my father was born here. Uh, I go to school in Scotland. Uh, my name begins with Mick or Mac. Uh, I contribute to the economy in Scotland, support Scotland's international sport teams, etc. You can add your own. So note this lesson starts from the assumption that everyone in the lesson thinks I am Scottish. But there might well be people in that lesson who actually think, well, I'm, I'm not Scottish. I mean, within the UK, it's interesting how it works, isn't it? If I'm in Scotland, if someone says, are you Scottish? I would normally say, I, I, I'm English, but I've lived here since you know, 1995. If I'm abroad and someone says, you know, are, are you English? I didn't really say, no, I'm Scottish. But within the UK, people don't change what they describe their identity as when they go and live in another part of the United Kingdom. So it's a bit different. If Scotland became independent, I guess I'd start saying I'm, I'm Scottish. Now, what's this lesson all about, though? Um, could it not be a slant is trying to encourage people to feel more Scottish? You know, you get these opinion polls. You feel more Scottish than British. And when people say they feel more Scottish, Scottish nationalists tend to say, all oh, right, that's, that's good. You see, it just shows uh, we're on the right track. Is this lesson promoting a sense of Scottish identity uh, tacitly at the expense of uh, British identity? I would suggest that it very possibly is. The main thing I'd say about this lesson, though, is just it's a waste of time. Again, go and do some maths. Go and do some proper education. Learn some history. Learn some capital cities. Or, some, or, or if you want to do something about values, I can have any problem with that. There's more to education than just the academic side. If you want to do something about values then teach the children not to tell lies. Teach them not to steal things. Uh, they're good places to start in primary school. So I hope that was interesting. That was a random selection of some of the uh, indoctrination materials currently employed in schools in Scotland. As I say, generally, the curriculum in most schools in Scotland is basically the mirror image of the Green Party Manifesto. Now, if you think the Green Party Manifesto is absolutely brilliant, it is full of truth and wisdom, uh, then fine. But you still should disapprove of the education system being used to promote that political philosophy to children. Now, are they succeeding in indoctrinating the children of Scotland? To some degree, yes. To a large degree, yes, I think. But far from universally. If you stand in the streets with the Scottish Family Party and you get chatting, if you see a group of teenage girls coming along, 
you know, more often than not, the conversation doesn't go particularly brilliantly. They're not particularly on board. Sometimes they are. If you see a group of teenage boys coming along, then the odds are very good that before long they'll be saying, oh, you should hear what they rammed down our throats at school. We're fed up of it. Mrs. So-and-so is always telling us this. We think it's a load of rubbish. We're fed up of it. Yeah, we're right behind you. Great. Let me take a leaflet. Um, so, yeah, the indoctrination project is not universally successful at the moment, I am delighted to say. So who's going to fix it? Any of the parties in the Scottish Parliament? Absolutely not. They all seem blind to it. Um, even the Conservatives, who in some ways the indoctrination is against their political philosophy, but they, again, they just don't seem to be able to recognise what's going on. We will get in and we will just depoliticise Scottish education. Depoliticise. Not repoliticise it with our views. Depoliticise it. Get back to basics. Real, basic education. And if you want that to happen, join the Scottish Family Party to support us in our endeavours to get an MSP or two in the Scottish Parliament. And let's take it from there. There's a link below where you can join. And thanks for watching.